you go in talking only about designing heat exchangers or very niche, your niche, they're not going to know what to do with you. You have to really highlight the broadness of your skills. And again, how your skills in oil and gas, in traditional engineering relate to the challenges. Because let's face it, engineering is not just about doing a project. It's about really exploring and developing things that have never been done before. another episode of Digital Innovations in Oil and Gas. And on today's uh, conversation, I'm going to be joined by a friend of mine, uh, Phil Black, who uh, is a professional engineer and innovator and digital enthusiast uh, who I met, gosh, a few years back. But he's uh, undergone some really interesting career transitions uh, that I think are really important for anyone who's working as a professional engineer, uh, especially as you're confronting not just this wave of digital innovation, but broader uh, energy transition issues, and to really think about how do you how to actually go about doing an energy uh, a, a career transition, and uh, F- Phil's Phil's been through this, so it's always useful to hear from the voice of experience. Uh, Phil, um, welcome to Digital Innovations in Oil and Gas. Jeffrey, it's so good to be here once again talking with you about the journey and all the exciting things going on in energy. Yeah, it's a it's a a very a dynamic landscape uh, this year. It's going to get increasingly uh, dynamic, actually, because the uh, climate pressures aren't aren't abating, and <laughs> we're also going yeah. through a major wave of uh, political change, not just in the United States but around the world as democracies grapple with uh, leadership challenges and uh, and old elections and the like. But really, let's let's turn this conversation more to <laughs> towards <laughs> you personally and. Ooh, I thought that's a big topic. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not, not going to go deal with that. Uh, I know that today you work as a coach and a, and a trainer for uh, engineers who are seeking career change, uh, but let's uh, let's really unpack your own personal and uh, professional background. How did you, uh, where, 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 did you where, did, where have you come from? What's your story? Sure. I'm a chemical engineer who, surprise, surprise, ended up in Houston working in oil and gas after I finished. I spent, man, 20 years working in automation and control. Uh, for at different consulting companies for all the big energy majors, BP, Exxon, Suncor, Total, you name it. I've probably been in the facility or worked with one of their control systems. And those would include uh, presumably domestic U.S. principally, or have you actually had opportunity to work internationally, globally? Uh, I've worked in the Middle East as well, helping uh, chemical companies over there as well. Uh, set up their control systems and manage, primarily manage the data, move the data from the sensors through the firewalls up to the business systems. That's really been where I've I've specialized. As a sort of a background, now much of that world started to change quite dramatically at the roughly, probably turn of the century where uh, digital uh, innovations uh, started to take root. So let's wind the clock back to uh, your first big uh, career shift um, when you first noticed how this this you know this wave of digital innovation was happening. Like, what, let's just give us a little bit of that context, if you don't mind. Sure, it was about 2017, 2016. I think yeah. cybersecurity was just starting to become at the forefront. We've had a had a few major attacks, yeah. and so especially in the Middle East, companies were really locking down their systems. It wasn't just oh, go log in. To the PLC direct from your from the internet and start making changes. No, there was firewalls and and the, you name it. Everybody was trying to secure all the legacy systems that had been designed way before there was such thing as passwords or encryption or anything like that. So that's really when I started noticing the importance of data, security of data. But then as well, there were so many new devices coming online. You know, up to, I don't know, early, mid-2000s, it was always pressure, flow, analyzer, temperature, maybe a few others, but that was it. They were all wired, the DCS. Mm -hmm. Now we had all these new types of equipment that you could just kind of bolt on or stick on and start pumping information, giving a lot more analysis ability that you didn't have to run through the control system with all the security which caused a lot of heartache <laughs> to IT and OT departments. Yeah. So that really kind of is where the explosion of data that was available from all these new sensors 
started my journey through digital innovation. So what were your what was your career goal at that time? Because, you know, it sounds like you could just keep, you know, you could you could continue on as your professional chemical engineer uh, or you could you could do other things like what, what was changing in your life that that, uh, you know, gave you the impetus to say, hey, there's other things here that that uh, I could be doing. Well, I liked doing the technical work, yeah. but I really wanted to expand and really look at the big picture, you know, not just, you know, I wanted to learn kind of how to architect the entire system, you know, all the way from the sensor, all the way up into these new, the cloud systems, the analytics capabilities, machine learning was just coming online. So I wanted to take a much larger view into the niche I had established. And so right. I was looking at how can I do something bigger? I know what I'm good at, but I need to do something bigger. And I want to start working more at the forefront, not kind of at the end with all the legacy upgrades and migrating and lift and shift. I wanted to really be designing something new. So that's kind of what sparked my interest in, hey, this digital thing has legs. The amount of data is not going to decrease. No. So I want to be at the front helping the customers, helping the clients, figure out how to manage, sort through, and do something useful with that data. Now, is that not really practical in your, in your current role or your role at the time? Like, why, why would, what would motivate it or what was going on that would, would say, hey, uh, a, a bigger change here is warranted? Um, I think for me, the bigger change was starting to travel. At the time, Wood, uh, I was working for Wood, yep. uh, and they really wanted to do a lot more in the Middle Eastern market. So I started traveling oh. and started, then I had to actually learn how to talk about what I did, not just do an engineering <laughs> report and turn it in. I had yep. to get up on stage and actually learn how to create a compelling reason for why customers needed to hire us yep. to help them manage their data. So I think that really I, until then, I had really been working kind of with the other technical engineers in the plants, uh, in the, with the control systems, but then really that launch into needing to speak publicly about it and then talking about it, the work I did in a much different manner, really helped me realize there's a lot more dimensions to this than I could just be a technical engineer. But you know what? I like getting up and talking to people and sharing my passion yeah. for the data which is kind of a weird thing to have passion for, I know, but, you know. <laughs> well, I think that's where you and I actually met, uh, was, was at a conference where you were on stage speaking. And I remember at the time, uh, most, most engineers who go up on stage, uh, you know, that's not, it's not their forte, let's put it that way. It's like, certainly not trained to do that. Uh, and that, that yet, you, there you were uh, on stage, you know, with, with intent and uh, it, it being uh, persuasive and presenting in a, in a thoughtful manner. Uh, so, so, the, so you had this, this, this major sweep of change happening. You, you had this traditional role. You could have stayed in that role, but you, you were staring at that bigger world thinking there's, there's more to this than, than just uh, sticking around. Um, so that gets us to, you know, what, what role could you or did you visualize for yourself, um, you know, in, beyond the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, as an uh, advocate for, um, for, for change? Like, what did you see as the, the possibilities for yourself? Well, I discovered that I really was able to connect on stage with people. I started going more with the sales team to talk about the front end of the process. Here's why you need to invest in this capability. Uh, and, and, and going through that process, I really said, there's a whole lot more opportunities for me. And so I need to think about, but until then, I was pretty much, I'm a technical guy. I'm just going to keep doing this and be in my happy little place. But that exposure to the different sides, the, the front end side, really made me say, you know, I want to be somewhere where I'm uh, in, in, in leading change, you know, uh, and, and maybe I can influence it from the, the front end as well. So that, that, that to me was a big, that, that working with the sales team and really, okay, how do we, what's the strategy for, for talking to this company? What are they, what are their problems? Instead of just, here's a spec, go implement it, or here's what you need to do, you know, really coming up and helping them discover their problems. And I started seeing 
all these vendors wanting to sell these IoT devices, and every IoT vendor got to <laughs> use my cloud, got to yeah. use my cloud, got to, got to, you know, and so it was just there. That was not going to be scalable for anyone, I any big company. Yeah. Uh, you know, it might work for one or two installations, a few pieces of equipment, but when you're going across the globe, across multiple sites of different ages, yeah. you can't have everything going in different places. That just creates more problems. Yeah. Yeah, so that kind of architectural problem that the industry was uh, creating for itself unintentionally, but the, <clears throat> that competitive dynamic to trying to own the whole landscape, uh, create a garden within which, say, uh, if you're a Siemens uh, shop, you're only on Siemens technology, and that's uh, that that forces you to confront this architectural question, but that in turn creates the question of how do you architect your way around that so that you don't uh, go down that that uh, pathway. Uh, as a, as a, a, a you know, sort of industrial challenge. This, of course, brings me to this, uh, uh, you know, the, the um, you have the vision for yourself is working in a new field. Um, uh, you, you probably saw that you could bring some strengths to this, but uh, what did you see as the kind of the gap? Like, what's the gap that the, your standard professional engineer is going to have to come across <laughs> so that they can be successful in a different career? So for me, it was really looking at all the data, all the problems with it, and then saying, what new type of technology could help address this? You know, nobody was asking for a solution in a specific area, but then I, at the time, blockchain was really big. I started looking into that, yeah. mm -hmm. and I just started spending any extra time I had, uh, either at work, when I had a few extra downtime between projects, start looking in the technology, looking in the possibilities and saying, okay, yeah, this is being used for cryptocurrency, but is there another use for it? And so just that, I would say, curiosity in terms of looking at something and can this be applied to an industrial context? And then starting to do it. You know, I had no idea what I was doing. I just said, <laughs> okay, let me try creating a node. Let me go on YouTube and look at videos. So yeah, it was really, there was no pretty solution. It was just, let me start seeing what I can do to, to do. And then asking people I work with, do you know what we can do with this? No, I don't know. I mean, just conversations. <laughs> so really having the, having the uh, willingness to, I guess, ask the stupid questions you know at the time there were starting to be a lot of blockchain big companies that wanted oh, to yeah. sell blockchain so yeah, yeah, just yeah. getting on the phone hey i'm phil at wood i, I want to talk yeah, yeah, <laughs> can you yeah. tell me about this and of course they were happy to someone call them and talk to them on the phone and so just really starting to learn and starting to not be afraid to know nothing in an area you know because before i was I was the expert. I was the expert in data and IoT yeah. and, you know, doing a little cybersecurity. But I had to go out and have the courage to be the dummy. Yeah. <laughs> and that yeah. Was, yeah, so, take a risk, you know, basically. Take, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take, take a risk, risk and, and uh, just start calling. So yeah. that led to a lot of side projects. I didn't get paid for them, did a lot of stuff outside. But just and then you know what? I'll just start talking about it. Maybe people will maybe help me find some people doing interesting things. And so getting on LinkedIn and just, hey, here's what I'm doing. Hey, here's my idea. Yep. Here's what I learned. And just starting to talk without knowing exactly what I was talking yes. I mean, again. Just kind <laughs> of, was, here's my journey. Here, yeah. yeah, here's what I'm learning. I'm not an expert yet, but here's yeah. what I'm learning. Yeah. And that was just that courage to be uh, be not not be the expert once again. I think was a big shift for me. Yeah, I think that's where I had seen you on stage was uh, talking about um, uh, blockchain technology in the context of sensors. But quite frankly, it doesn't. Blockchain's not really the. Uh, I mean, you could talk about anything. Uh, 3D printing, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, just the f uh, flavor of the day. Uh, someone's got to take a uh, take a risk. Get out in front and uh, <laughs> seize, seize ownership of a of a topic and uh, be seen as the as someone who's least curious, if not I'm not the, necessarily the expert. And then, as I even start talking about it internally, I get a call or a text one day. Hey, come in this meeting. You know, would it hire the CTO, the first CTO? They wanted to be digital first. Yep. 
And they're like, hey, we heard this guy in Houston, Phil Black. He's doing something with blockchain. You know, and I go in the meeting and I'm like, hi, <laughs> you know, and he's like, I heard you know something about blockchain. Here's some money. Go figure out if we can do anything with it. And yeah. I was just flabbergasted. You know, yeah. I wasn't trying to set myself up for a different role specifically. I just wanted to do something different. But that yeah. that investment in in learning something new uh, paid off because then now it wasn't just one person. Now I had the CTO. I had a team. A you know, and I had some a had budget some money. to start to start really pursuing the avenue so yeah, that yeah. again having the courage to try something even though you don't know where it's go where it might lead yeah. can lead to opportunities some some sort of payoff uh, i know on linkedin you post frequently about your uh, your interest in impromptu uh, theater um how, how does that impromptu work uh, how does that how does that flavor all of this i just because i think so it's sort funny. of straight down the middle engineers i don't think of stage <laughs> actors doing impromptu comedy quite frankly yeah who who would think an engineer could be funny i don't you know it's, <laughs> Sounds like not me joke. for sure not yeah i yeah. know i wouldn't have yeah no it's it's funny while i was kind of going through this journey of, of technology and trying to figure out what I wanted to do next, yeah. you know, as go bigger in my career, uh, I started taking classes at a local theater. It was COVID had just kind of finished. And, you know, I think my, my wife wanted to get me out of the house. So, you know, <laughs> so she signed you she up. Said, she said, yes. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> it's like, ah, try it, you know? Yeah. So I go down there and wow, it was hard. I mean, I didn't know what I was doing, never done acting. Yeah. I mean, I got up on stage and talked, but that was prepared notes. I had a slide deck. I had, you know, I was, yeah. very I different. had my script, very different. But what I gained from improv was the courage to take personal risk. You know, when, as engineers, we're working in oil and gas and hazardous environments. No you know, risk. Things have to be right. Yeah, you can't. No you risk. can't. You, yeah, you have to double, triple yeah. check. Yeah. You know, uh, there's a very good reason why you have to be so detail oriented and thorough because there's people's lives on the line. You know, the challenge is when it comes to personal risk, that mindset can take over. Oh, yeah. You know, and so you you get so focused on being risk averse in your career and the in the in the important decisions yeah. that it's hard to learn how to be risk seeking for your personal opportunities. Right. And, and and that improv forcing me to get up on stage, not have a script, not know where things are going to go with a group of other people. Mm -hmm. That was a game changer for me because it helped me realize, hey. I feel like as engineers, it's very easy to get, okay, we're moving along, making progress. Oh, now we have to change. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Let's thoroughly analyze, think about it. And, yeah. you know, but you lose all the momentum of your progress to that point. Yeah. yeah and yeah. so improv really helped me learn how to leverage the momentum I had built in my career and then use it and redirect it. So I didn't stop. Yeah. Take three months to think about it. Take yeah, six yeah, months yeah. to figure something out. No, start making little steps. Start trying things. Start calling people on the phone. Yeah. You know, because you're leveraging the momentum you already have. Yeah. And so to me, that was the game changer was, was that pivot aspect. Don't stop and do a 90 degree turn gracefully. I have this image of a dancer. Pivot and jump higher yeah. because you've already use yeah, that momentum, momentum to, to yeah. springboard yeah. you know to new levels and you're still working as a professional engineer so it's this this actually is not fantasy it's just real world so, yeah I, I love i love doing engineering i love yeah. working with the people i love work, working with technical people yeah. i mean people who focus on the details i can easily get lost in the details so you know <laughs> it's good to be around people who think like <laughs> think like that as well but yeah. then having the courage to embark on something new. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I found the passion for, again, working with other people to help unlock, help technical talent 
unlock the potential and again learn how to embrace that personal risk yeah. so they can really springboard into new possibilities that's 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 i'm really excited about that yeah so the, so you became went from a sort of very traditional chemical engineer professional chemical engineer to digital engineer leveraging some of these ideas about seeking risk uh, recognizing when there was opportunity laying the groundwork for you to be able to be successful. What are the sorts of things, I mean, you talked about going to conferences and, and giving talks. What other sorts of things did you do that uh, created this, this context where when the opportunity presented itself, CTO calls, you are the guy that they suddenly uh, zeroed in on? Um, I think it was having the willingness to, you know, put in the long hours where I didn't know what the output would be, uh, you know, and then uh, another part was, you know, based off the knowledge about blockchain, we had a project in China come up yeah. and they were all into how can we use the technology to, they had a problem, can this be solved? So getting involved and then doing work in that. So really getting my hands dirty uh, helped give me the confidence because it's like, okay, I'm not just doing a bunch of pilot projects. I'm doing a real project that Wood is getting paid for. And, I, and I, again, the, the people I met and, and the appreciation for the, the different cultures and the different ways of working has been fascinating for me personally. Yeah, yeah, it creates, uh, gets, it gets you that, as you say, getting your hands dirty is really, really important because people will recognize that you're not just talking about it, you're actually working to do something about it. And I think it's also true, anything that's relatively novel in the world um, uh, there, there needs to be people who, who go in and experiment with it and see how it plays out. And that's probably a takeaway from this uh, conversation, which is if you see these opportunities starting to emerge, you know, don't, uh, don't just uh, ignore them. Uh, so, um, so that creates your, your opportunities. So you basically did a career pivot. Could, could anybody do this, do you think? Yes, 100%. <laughs> I mean, it's, I am, I, it, and I'm an engineer, so it's again, it's like I, I have a high bar for like yeah. enthusiastically committing to something, but I am absolutely com convinced that anybody, no matter how technical, no matter how focused you've been on one specific thing, if you can learn how to embrace that personal risk, that, that creative risk, and take a bold leap in a new direction. And a bold leap doesn't mean I quit my job and I do something different. A bold leap can be is, is a bold change, it can be a small step in a new direction while you're still doing what you're doing. And that's the message I really want to get across is that anybody can learn to pivot. You don't have to be an improv comedian or you know <laughs> something like that or do something wild and crazy. It's just yeah. a matter of having that boldness of spirit, boldness of character. And I think oil and gas people have that. I mean, we have such talent in designing equipment, running processes, protecting the health and safety of people that mm -hmm. it really doesn't matter where we're going. If we want to do something in oil and gas or move in a completely different direction, it's about just learning to take those skills and translate them into the boldness and into a way that others can 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 understand. You know, I. It, if I had gone to the CTO and started talking about the mathematics and encryption and yeah. cryptography behind blockchain, he would have yeah. been like, all right, see you later. You know, yeah. it's, uh, it's yeah. about it's about framing the yeah. what you say to the right audience. And anybody can learn that. Yeah. Uh, and so that's why I'm convinced that it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing one thing. If you feel like you've been pigeonholed, that's OK. Anybody can learn the art of the pivot and, yeah. and that's a power it's a powerful moment for me and I, I want that to be a powerful moment for everybody who i come in contact with is this a good time for people to be thinking about career pivoting if you're in oil and gas in houston i mean uh, definitely oil, 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 well oil and gas is you know still so, still strong like uh if you're yeah. you know if you look at the prices uh, prices are are signaling that there's uh you know, the, the market hasn't evaporated yet, but you know, there's a lot of transactions underway right now, a lot of uh, merger activity. Why would this create the context for people to be thinking differently about their careers, at least from your, your perspective? So for me, it's all about being in control of my career. I've been through several acquisitions and you know, there's a lot of uncertainty. Yeah. There's a lot of no one knows what's gonna happen. 
And so when there's uncertainty, what's the natural reaction to kind of like, okay, don't do anything big, don't do anything bold, you know, just kind of plod along, yep. keep yep. your head down. <laughs> yeah. And that does not lend itself to positioning yourself for the best opportunities next, whether it's an opportunity with the company, like you said, there's a lot of acquisitions going on. So mm -hmm. if you want to position yourself for a new role in the company, that doesn't come by accident. There are certain things you can do to start laying the foundation, making sure that they know who you are, that they know the impact you're having, especially if you're in digital and technology roles. Those are the most challenging to move across companies because they're doing their own projects. Yeah. And so why would they take on a risky project? So I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about especially digital people in digital and technology roles because those are important roles for innovation within oil and gas and you have to steer your own future to be successful during a transition i'd, I'd also observe that the investment the u.s in particular is going through through the auspices of the inflation reduction act uh, is creating a a huge demand pull right now for people who understand how to really manage risk <laughs> carefully professional engineers, and then apply that same thinking to hydrogen projects, geothermal projects, fusion, all of these new innovations that, that uh, stand to create the future world of energy uh, need people who look like you, quite frankly. Uh, and and uh, so there's a, I think there's another demand pull there. It's not just about um, yeah, transactions and M&A, and but I think there's other, other macro forces. Do, do you sense that as well? Are you hearing from people saying that there's, a, there's things out there that they want to be part of? And how do you do that if you're in a, in a traditional career? Yes, there's so many opportunities. I think the challenge for moving into these, the hydrogen, the geothermal, is that these, these projects and these companies are much smaller. And so if you go in talking only about designing heat exchangers or very niche, your niche, they're not going to know what to do with you. You have to really highlight the broadness of your skills. And again, how your skills in oil and gas, in traditional engineering, relate to the challenges. Because let's face it, engineering is not just about doing a project. It's about really exploring and developing things that have never been done before. And that's exactly the situation the energy industry finds itself in. We have so many new sources coming online. How do you manage the complexity of of, of getting all the different sources of energy uh, uh, Collab not collaborated, but uh, Inter combined integrated. and integrated, integrated yeah, yeah, integrated in a way that it's actually useful when you turn on your lights or when a new plant shuts, shuts up, starts up, you know, how, you know, with this, uh, the data centers, you, know, you, have, you need energy, you need a steady, reliable, predictable supply. And as more sources come on, be, achieving that goal just exponentially increases the complexity. So yeah. people from oil and gas are perfectly suited for these opportunities because we know how to manage complex systems. We know how to do that while managing risk. Yeah. And, and that's that's what I want to help people highlight. Highlight that part. Don't highlight just the spec or how many miles you drilled or how deep you drilled. That's good. But highlight how you manage the complexity and how you adapted to challenges when you didn't know what to do next, because that's the skill that these companies are desperate for. Uh, you've uh, worked to codify uh, the the uh, ideas of of doing a career pivot like this into a new venture. What what can you tell me about it? So this is the hardest part, because <laughs> I'm an engineer. I like to figure everything out, and I'm asking people, don't. I mean, I didn't do this five-step process, engineer career pivot <laughs> methods, a five-step process. Yeah. I didn't, I, I didn't, you know, it wasn't like, oh, step one, I need to do this, step two. I mean, it was a lot of iteration, trying things that didn't work. And so my, my challenge to engineers is learn from another engineer, <laughs> you know, uh, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You're, this is a wheel you don't have to reinvent. You can take a proven and, and, and tried and true method and then use it. Again, it's all about the pivot. It's about accelerating, not stopping and figuring it out for yourself. And, and as an engineer, I admit, I'm, I'm bad about that. It's like, so having the trust, this is not just a, 
oh, I made this up or, you know, I, I didn't ask chat GPT to figure, you know, to, <laughs> to come up with a, a system, you know, but you, you still have to trust that it will work. And, and, and that's challenging, I, I think, for, for engineers and for lots of technical technical people who are used to figuring things out for themselves. So have the trust, try it out. You'll find it will pay back huge dividends for yourself because you'll be able to move much faster because I've already, I've already made the mistakes. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Phil, thank you so much for coming on Digital Innovations and on Gas today to talk about uh, how you take a traditional career and combine it with uh, the, these waves of change coming at us and then launch your own uh, new career, pivoting as you, as you, as you use the word, uh, into a new direction. It's been fascinating. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jeffrey. This has been another episode in Digital Innovations in Oil and Gas. If you like what you've heard, please press that like button. Better yet, share this with your friends so that others can learn this uh, great content. And if you want to learn more about Engineer Career Pivot and how you might do that, uh, just check the show notes below, which will have links to uh, the uh, website. Bye for now. <laughs>